Peace, everybody. So, uh, just finished doing this video. Um, I had a lot of fun with this edit, not going to lie. You already know what's going on. We're about to get into this video, but uh, wanted to just briefly chat with y'all just before we get started. Have a little fun. What we got here is some Crown Royal Black, you know, grown folk drink. But regardless, I want y'all to take your favorite drink and take a shot every time I say the words utility or A. This is all the Scrolls Legends, rank gameplay, and uh, I had fun with this one. I, I hope you enjoy as well. Cheers. Shout out to the Empire. May all our components, <laughs> our components, may all our opponents have this energy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Elder Scrolls Legends. This is where you need to be. This shit is popping over here. My opponent is done, and we ain't even get started. We just on turn nine. Shit. Anyway, moving up. Okay, I know. Whoa, how did we get here so quickly? Well, let's take it back to the beginning. Yeah, bye. Uh, Sly Buggy. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get it. I feel like I should open some packs. Nah, we good. Let's get to work. We are up the ladder. Chill. I know I'm at five. Relax. We going up. We going to make it there. We always make the levels, but we need to do it now. Let's get it. We are going with the unending. It's one of my favorite decks. I guess I should cut into the deck discussion. All right, that's a little bit better. <clears throat> Pardon me, y'all. So this is the unending, everybody. This is a control-based deck. This is the empire, the unending empire, I should say. I should actually switch that up, the unending empire. We're going to do that grown folks style right on the channel. This is not a, a fast-based deck at all. We got one copy of Opportunist. We have one copy of Ungolem. We have two one cost copies one cost cards in the deck so just looking at the skew of things right now you can see where we're going with this is a very control focused deck we want to try to get our magic up as quickly as possible so we can start the long term gameplay as quickly as possible in terms of you know getting our six turn cards out so let's talk about it let's just go quickly through the cards Bandari Opportunist I run one copy literally because of the fact that I run three copies of Ultra Despair for the first card, I'm either going to get one copy of Opportunist or one copy of Ungolem. The reason why I have them both at one, well, obviously Ungolem, you can only have one. It's a unique. You can only want, limit one per deck, duh. However, Opportunist, the reason why I only want one of that is because I run one copy of Opportunist because I just want to be able to summon one and put the plus one copy in the deck as soon as possible that's it that's the only reason why i want it and on gullum so either i'm gonna get the lethal plus one or i'm gonna get the charge plus one but either way it's plus one when i play the altar despair moving on we have two copies of arrow stalker this is a good card to draw i'm not sure why i don't run it at three i think it's because it's clog i like to run my cards at 75 tight i don't like to run more, no more Respectfully, this is kind of a Yu-Gi-Oh mindset. Not even I, I can't even talk like that. Like I'm some fucking pro at Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm definitely not. But I've always, in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh, I played at the limit, which I believe was 50. At least at the time I was playing. Pardon me if I'm correctly mistaken. Um, it should be 50. The fuck am I talking about? Anyway, I play at the limit. So Barrel Stalker, I keep it at two. I don't need three. I don't want to clog it up. But this is good to have drain. It's good as a guard for defense as well. So that's great. Moving on to Fighters Girls Recruit, Prophecy, and Lethal. So this is just great to pop on the field, knowing that pretty much a monster is going to have to die to this. Or if you have your own way, you can choose a monster to kill to this, and that's the way you want to do it. I, re I run one copy of Finish Off because I know that it'll always be a one new creature. I have a, I'm running 41 creatures. We're going to be doing a lot of battling. So there will always be opportunity for me to utilize this card. But I have it one, at one copy because I don't want it to overclog. Two, I feel like you have one in the card that, you know, one in the hand that may be dead and you never want like dead cards. Everything should be able to work once you have enough magicka to play it. And that is the strength of the Empire. The Let me search this drink and let's talk. 
two copies of Murkwater Witch. Pardon me. My, uh, should do this better. That's a little bit better. Anyway, yeah, that's a bit better. Got two copies of Murkwater Witch. We put that in the field to decrease one. You'd be surprised how many, car how many powerful monsters have one defense, and this will kill them out. Murkwater Witch will murder them outright, which is great. So, great defense and surprising utility due to the fact that they can destroy a lot of creatures or just make them useless. Spire Marsh Blade is my more aggressive kind of attack creature. Um, I prefer to have this obviously on per turn 7, so when it dies, I can draw a card. But when I know that I'm playing against an aggressive deck, you know, Battle Mage, for example, I can plop this on the field to just get get out and just get aggressive with my opponent and trade and hopefully stop him from attacking me directly. I run one copy of Discrist the Wimpy due to the fact that I have a lot of cards that can simply trade with it. Emperor's Blade is one of the few cards I run that have a slay effect, so I can combine that with Squish the Wimpy just to get a quick three bonus to the health. You'd be surprised how quickly that comes in handy. Whoa, what am I doing? We have three copies of Thieves Guild Recruit. We are running a lot of high cost monsters, um, definitely going into the sevens. We have a lot of cards that we cannot play immediately. We don't we don't want to touch these cards in the first starting turn. So Thieves Guild Recruit is very helpful in the fact that we can draw these high cost cards and it's not that bad because they are Thieves Guild Recruit is just good to be able to play my high cost cards earlier. Better utility in terms of them being low cost magicka. Moving on. I run three copies of Amist Arrow Storm and I want to talk about this in particular. Let's switch that up. I'm running three copies of Arrow Storm for aggressive aggro, for example, base builds. Aggressive equals aggro for slang. Anyway, these are guild for, for example, Relentless Raider. Or just builds that are utilizing that right off of the rip. You know, obviously, you already see Nord, Firebrand, cars that can die right off the rip to it. But just thinking about cards that have presence on the field that you want to die. This is why I run Arrow Storm, just to kind of kill a field with low cost creatures that are summoned very fast. Dwemer, for example, when they start to get busy. And specifically, I want to shout out Invade. This card kills Invade fast in terms of the fact that it has zero defense. So this is a card I kind of more or less tech in there for if I'm playing against the defense with low cost kind of attacks, but kind of spam on the field. Or just Invade where I just need to get the you know get the portal off the field and then i can focus on the monsters with the rest of the monsters in the hand i run one copy of gambler just in, you know due to the fact that i have a lot of high cost monsters gambler is is just very helpful in the fact that i can just kind of chuck one for example i can chuck a guardian and to the second point, it's you. It's a good target. My opponent's seeing this, and he does not want me to draw a plus two. So that's going to get out some cards in his hand and hopefully expose some plays. And again, you don't want that to happen, but you want to get your opponent out of cards because once you start turning up, once the turns start going up, you're ready to really explode, and you want your opponent weak. That's the strength of the Empire. Anyway, you got the King. This is where you really start to turn up. You got this in the hand. I feel like that's really a good look. You know, a start of a good look. Galen is my man. Shuffle an item, a creature. We have no items in this deck. That's just by design. We're not really focused on that. But we have plenty of monsters that we can choose from. And there is so much to choose from in terms of the utility that it provides. So, let's talk about Galen and the fact that he seems very straightforward. But it's his utility. Like, Galen is going to give you three copies of a card and give them three, three. That is extremely super. But think about the summon effects of cards that benefit off of their attack costs. Necromancer and Sh Galen and Shelter team up so well just due to this effect. You summon a creature from your discard pile with less power than Necromancer. So if he's boosted to six, you can get cards such as another commander out. You can actually get Razam Dar back out in the field to summon an attack and draw another card again. You can literally reuse Galen if he's in the graveyard and really make another three copies of whatever card you have in your hand to put back in the deck so this card is extremely valuable here just due to the utility he provides to whatever monster you're in there's no card that deads here you can even make opportunists if it's even dead especially the one that has the effect of, of drawing an additional card i wouldn't recommend it just because of pierce and twilight but still you can make copies of ungolem unconventional but you see what i'm saying like you have so much options and again galen is a unique 
he works well with other uniques in terms of making copies of Gray Fox. Rothamdar, Tharn. You have three copies of that in the deck. Don't get me wrong. You don't want to draw that early. But if you have 15 magic and you start drawing it to this, you know, you have options to play with. Moving on. I run three copies of Necromancer's Amulet. We have 41 creatures here. So we want to get this out as soon as possible. We're hoping to draw this as quickly as possible just so we have that utility. This is going to provide us a lot of life because you'd be surprised how quickly and efficiently that one health adds up over the course of the duel. Tree Minder, where we have a guard that gives us one plus magicka. That is defense plus utility in terms of setting us up for better turns. I love it. Premium. I run one copy of Blackwood Distiller. And that is just by design. We have a, a clogged four cost field. So let's talk about some cards that's not in here. Regularize, because even though I'm going to provide the deck code in the description. I don't say that you have to run it exactly how I do. I have some cards I could recommend. Argon Archie and Venom Tongue. I don't run this in this build because of aggro in particular. He has lethal and slay, but no guard. And I kind of want to kind of have, have a protective defense. And this is wonderful, especially when it combined with Squished Whippy earlier for that easy kind of combo sway, slay. But again, against an aggro based, aggressive based deck. You know, this is going to sit on the field and my opponent can have options to silence it or just simply remove it, you know, a javelin or something of that nature and be done. And it's like, no, nah, it won't slow them down. And I need something that kind of slows them down. So this is why I run a Blackwood of Distiller, just one copy, because I am good with the effects of that it provides me. If my opponent is foolish enough to not have any guard to stop it. I'm going to be able to gain three Magicka and be able to maybe utilize one of my high cost cards. At the same time, if he has something that can slay, I'm going to slay and gain plus one Magicka akin to my Tree Minder. So we just have, again, it's providing us options and we run one not to clog it. Again, we have a lot of full cost cards. We have Edict of Azor and this is just powerful. We're destroying an enemy, enemy creature or support. Full cost. Can't beat that with a stick. Emperor's Blade. Now, this is why... I chose to run three copies of this due to the fact that it has guard and the fact that it has four, um, the effect of slaying and giving me three health and giving my health back. Now, four or five is decent on his own on turn four. Don't get it twisted, especially if you break a rune on turn three. This is powerful. But think about, again, cards that we talked about before where you have, excuse me, <laughs> multiple copies, have that boost in the deck, or even going into later turns where we have commander in play and we draw into that boost and where it's a five six or a six seven this is extremely a this is an extremely powerful guard so yeah i run three copies of just the presence that it provides if a weak monster is in this lane you have to address this card or i'm going to get three health that's just how it works and this is why i like this card so much moving on the counter and just the little brother to this card territorial viper Territorial Viper is my kind of problem problem removal card. Most cards can be removed by lethal, and I have charge, so I'm just going to slam it to anything, invade, a very high attack creature. If you're foolish enough to have it exposed or in, a, in the open lane, I'll just use that to kill it. And now, and that's for the early game. This is for when, you know, aggressive base decks, and this is where we kind of move into the mid game strategy. We run three casts in the time. We just sort of remove problem cards. There's so many problem cards in turn five. It's it's hard. It's where, where do I start? Kaji, I mean, um, shit. I I give you one card that I love to remove on turn five. I shit you guys not. I love to banish this fucking card, even though I could just javel in it. I love seeing this card removed from play. This is a fucking brawlic card that I hate seeing because that six attack and pilfer and breakthrough, he's gonna fucking activate his effect. That is a high attack card at five cost. You have to address this motherfucker. Can you imagine if that shit had ward in addition to breakthrough? Good lord. I love to banish the champion. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Random. All right, back to it. We run Javelin. We run three copies of Javelin for the prophecy and the fact that it destroys a creature so we can get rid of problem cards. Easily said, Prophecy is playing this for free when we draw from a rune roll. So, if an aggressive player is attacking us, we have to pick this up, pop whatever 
card that we feel that we need to have removed and we do it for free that's the most important thing we run one copy of Shadowfront Priest. And the reason why I do that is because I have three copies of Edith the Gazor. I can already destroy an enemy support. So I have that to silence any creature. Again, I have a lot of destroying cards, such as removal, going back to Arrow Strong, destroying cards outright. So this is for cards that I just need to silence. And it's not a lot. And just really for support. So this is just a monster presence that will destroy our support. Control. The Gray Fox is powerful in the utility. Drawing a card from my opponent's discard pile is, is just universally powerful. That's Monster and Reborn Monster Reborn in Yu-Gi-Oh! is where you can summon a monster from either player's graveyard. Yeah, so I wasn't playing with y'all. I need y'all to understand how significant and important the Gray Fox is. So we're gonna have a discussion about this. We're gonna get a bit more detail right now. So let, let, I need y'all to be patient with me. We we just gonna talk. Listen. Hey, so I really wanted to kind of showcase this for you. I want everyone to have a a better picture of how powerful the Gray Fox is. So pardon the cutaway, but this is important that you understand this. So let me talk to you. Monster Reborn is a spell card in Yu-Gi-Oh that allows you to summon a monster from either player's graveyard. Most cards you can play three of. This is limited to one this card used to be banned because of how powerful it is literally any monster if it has 4,000 attack 2800 if it's in either player's graveyard and you're able to special summon it you can bring it to your side of the field it's very straightforward nothing too special about that but wanted to show you how powerful it is in this game where it's literally limited to one anyway let's get back to it y'all this shit lets you pick up whatever card in your opponent's graveyard. Any card. The Gray Fox allows you to pick up any card from your opponent's graveyard, whether that be an action, item, or, or monster. The utility in that is just understated to a motherfucker like that. Is, this is one of the most powerful cards in the build next to Rosalind. The only reason why it's not that powerful is because it don't have charge. I like the fact that he doesn't have a, a monster title or he doesn't belong to anyone a monster allegiance i actually respect that he's the only monster that has that anyway moving on to the second ability which is not that powerful but it is extremely useful and powerful as the duels as you're able to control the matches for example if you're at turn 15 your opponent has two cards in the hand and you have gray fox in the field you can summon it and look at whatever few cards your opponent has in the hand. You can control it so you're not breaking the room, but just making sure that you look at, you can pilfer and just look at whatever it has and just prepare. With the Gray Fox activating the second effect, if your opponent, if you activate the effect and your opponent has Edict of the Despair, Edict of Azor, pardon me, you already know not to summon or put Alter Despair on the field. You have knowledge of what to play and what not to play. So the effect of this is powerful when you can control how many cards your opponent is, has in the hand and what they're kind of doing if that makes sense this is extremely powerful fucking broken anyway moving on thorn hiss maze this is my five course three four game plus one this is the big brother to three tree monitor as this is the three course one one five course three four and the effect that it gains one cost att one attack it gains one attack whenever my magic increase so if i have this on the field and then afterwards i summon tree minder this is a 4-4 so it has utility and that's extremely helpful all of the cards work together and it's just when it when it at the turn 14 turn 12 13 you can pretty much tell it's over the empire is taken over you can tell when the duel is pretty much wrapped up so moving on Alter the displayer once we get to turn six we have our powerful cards hitting the field we have our fucking strong supports just big body cards that are going to kind of change the match like change the flow for the rest of the match so we're going to start with the first one alter despair this is the support 12 uses of it so we're going to have this in the field for a while until our opponent decides to remove it but we're going to sacrifice the creature to summon a creature from our deck with the cost and then the cost increases by one so we are going through the deck pretty much for every lack we're going to go through the deck for lack of a better term and that's going to be so helpful for us in terms of being able to utilize monsters, for example, we can summon opportunists and start charging and put a copy in the deck. On Golem, if we haven't drawn it, we can put three copies of Brotherhood Assassin. If we have drawn it, 
then we're not going to get on Golem. We're going to get the Brotherhood Assassin and go plus. So that's great. Again, we're getting utility, but it's it's when the field is really working together. If you have Amulet on the field prior to that, you gain a plus one life. And that's when it really starts to add up. When you, every turn you're really stacking that life effect. You're sacrificing monsters and just utilizing that. Also, the spares are heart and soul of this deck. And if you, you, you have to be careful with this. You, if you know that you're playing against intelligence, be careful with Pearson Twilight. You do not want three copies of this removed. That is going to hinder your progress significantly. You don't want that to happen. So watch your ass if you're playing against blue. Make sure to play cautiously with your goal to display. Unless you know that you can play around it. If you got two in the hand, you're good. But if you know you have one in the hand and you can take your time with it, take your time. Let's move on. Fresh start. This is for pretty much drawing three cards when we are kind of stagnant going into the turn 12, 13, and we want to need some more utility. This is going to provide us that. If we, again, at 14, if we had turn 14 and we have 14 plus Magicka, 15, 16, etc., playing Fresh Start, we're going to be able to play two or three. We're going to be able to utilize Fresh Start significantly. We don't want to draw this early, obviously, but once it's late game, this is the, per this is the perfect card to replenish the hand, hands down. Have the Zerts to drink for this one. Generous Tilius, the king of the empire, the general, excuse me, the general of the empire. A unique, you summon a 2-2 guard in each lane. Anytime a critical creature dies, obviously the guard and any other creatures you have with it, he gains one attack. His presence on the field is important due to the fact that he is powerful as other creatures die. He gives you a creature with guard in both lanes. That is why I run him. He is just perfect in terms of just setting up and having guard on both sides. And more to the point, we'll talk about the next card. Well, let's go to it. We'll skip over this for a little bit, but let's talk about Necromancer. Odenarian. Odenarian? Odenarian Necromancer. Yeah. His effect is powerful as the duel gets later right now his effect is kind of basic there is a lot of cards for me to choose from if they are in the graveyard for me to utilize um and that is important especially Gen general Tilius. this is a card that can be utilized by this so if i'm happen to play this on turn five by breaking a room or on turn six the necromancer can easily bring him back and easily set up defense so this is powerful and as the duels get later and you play commander that's where you can start to utilize and get better monsters from the graveyard such as Razum Dar, Grey Fox, etc. Necromancer is one of the most powerful cards as well in the build but again it, it really benefits as the duels progress later in as the rounds as the turns just keep going up and up. If you can outlast your opponent you got this shit. Praetorian Commander. Now, this is the glue of the build. I'd say, don't get me wrong, also Despair is a card that you don't want to see removed, but Commander is the soul of the deck. Given every creature in the deck 1-1 one, one is, is pretty much what is giving you the motivation, you know that when you plop this on the field, every card that you draw after that is going to be boosted significantly, and that is just perfect. In terms of, for example, Rosendahl, your guards have more presence as they have better defense. That is just perfect. Tree Monitor doesn't look weak anymore because he's now a 2-2, two, 3-3. Two, three, three. See what I mean? Like, Commander just gives the monsters just more utility because of their presence. There's a lot of guard here, and it just makes it more powerful. And combine that with Journey, Journey to Silent Guard, this is a card I, I hope to not draw until turn 25. I shit you not. I, I know that's crazy. I just said turn 25, but I don't want to see this card until it's like I only have like three cards in the deck. Take a look at the effect. You see why. Journey to Sovereign Guard boosts every creature in your graveyard back into your deck and then gives them 5-5. Five, five. So if you have multiple opportunists, you have 6-6s six, hitting the field. A 6-6 six, six on goal. You see where I'm getting at. Every creature in the build is boosted like a motherfucker. And you redraw it. You have a fresh deck. This is unique for a reason. You don't want to draw them early, but if it's turn 16, 17, let me not even say it like that. With Journey to Sovereign Guard, for me, depending on how the flow is going, if I have 
if I'm touching around 20 creatures in the graveyard, this is the perfect time to play it. Because more than likely, I've maybe played one conscription, maybe two. But I'll have one conscription to play on the field. I'll be able to summon a lot after that. And the monster I'm going to summon is fucking powerful. Yeah, journey. Can't slouch with no clown royal, pardon me. Hey, so let's keep it moving. We have one copy of Pure Blood Elder. This is pretty much a late game card only. I like to put this card in the field for presence due to the fact that I'm going to gain Max Magicka and double that whenever I do that, whenever I gain Max Magicka. So whenever the turn passes, I'll double it. If I happen to summon Thorn His Mage or Tree Miter, I'll double the Magicka gain. So this is just great for utility, but late game. Rosengar is more my card that I like to utilize more due to the fact that it's charged, due to the fact that his effect, I can draw a card. I'll make a I'll make a video just dedicated to Rosengar. This is my favorite and most overpowered card in the Elder Scrolls Legends, period. There's no there's no card that fucking takes advantage of utility like Rosengar. Look at that fucking effect and tell me that's Yadagaraza. Like, Yadagaraza stops you from drawing. This card gives you what you draw. And you can simply stop your opponent. Like, you control the duel by simply having your opponent draw one card per turn. This Razumdar is Yadagaraza. The fucking big brother of Yadagaraza. I'm done. Dawn's Wrath. Dawn's Wrath is my kill-all for a lane. If I'm, if I'm playing against aggressive decks and I'm able to... Pretty much have my magic built up. By turn eight, whatever lane is giving me problems, I just kill it. No questions asked. I run two, cause three is gonna clog it. I run one copy of Eclipse Baroness for the draw power. Again, we don't have a lot of draw options outside of fresh start. Pardon me, Thieves Skill Recruit and Marsh Blade if we happen to have seven or more. So this is just a powerful presence with a great effect. We draw the card and it's reduced by two. So if we happen to draw something, you know high in cost it'll be reduced for us so that's it just gives us great utility thorn eroxia thorn she is powerful i wish that i put this on the channel i actually had three supports in the field i had two copies of neck of uh, necromancer's amulet and one copy of altar despair my opponent was playing a version of drain with uh should i forgot the card oh let me not forget the card, just go to the card. Conjurer Spirit and Forward Camp. My opponent had a copy of Forward Camp on the field. So with my opponent having a copy of Forward Camp on the field, I was able to summon Thorn with my two supports and an and also excuse me, three supports in total. Two amulets and an altar. I summoned Thorn. I I stole um his support, the forward camp, and I was able to draw plus two. And have eight attack on the field. So combined with Araxia Thorn's attack, that was fourteen plus two off of that off of that steal. The game was over, if that makes sense. Um if it wasn't already over. Like this is the in terms of utility, this shit is powerful. Now, the last gas is something to take into effect. Like that ain't something to obviously it's just you can just destroy it and whatever it steals, you get it back. Think about how you can silence it. And it nullifies it. So whatever you stole is yours. If you happen to play, if it survives for a turn and you play New Era, you just put him back in the deck. So you have whatever card you stole. And if it's a support, you keep it as a support, but Thorn goes back in the deck. You see what I mean? There is ways to move around the um, the last gas effect in terms of giving it back to your opponent. You just got to find a way to work that correctly. And I say that to say... You need to be very careful with how you summon Thorn. This is one. This is very powerful, but you need to be careful with what you are taking and when, because it is powerful when you can swing it around. In terms of the example that I gave you earlier, New Era. This card should be fucking. If I'm being honest with you, this card should cost thirteen. This card is 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 overpowered to a fundamental degree that. I'm not hating on it. Don't get me wrong. This card has won me the duel on so many occasions. But on turn 11. And, and we're talking about the utility. I don't even play intelligence. There are cards that can lower the cost of this card. If you happen to have that card. In terms of intelligence on the field. It's just. 
it's easy to manipulate. There's a, you know what? I even just keep it a hundred with you. There's a deck that I haven't posted on the channel yet. This card combined with New Era is broken. This is why I don't, I don't really think New Era is kind of appropriate right now the way it is in the game. This card can pretty much, if you draw that card, and if you even have Brotherhood of Sanctuary in the field, and you draw multiple copies, fuck, what the fuck? Anyway, this card pretty much makes New Era zero cost, and that is just OP broken in every sense of the word. That is just an example of how it just doesn't, this, this card does not belong in Elder Scrolls Legends. It is just overpowered to a degree. I have one duel simply to just, just off the fact that I just put everything back in the deck. And, you know, I mean, it is what it is. That's how the deck is designed. But, yeah, it's just weird. At 11 Magicka, I feel like there should be more work put in for this card. Like, maybe you have to discard a card for you to shuffle the creatures back in the deck. You know, give it a cost to make it worth the effect. If that makes sense. Or, yeah, discard two cards or something of that nature. I feel like that would make it... If you have 11 magic and you play this card, that's it. This is, a, this is a safety net. And it shouldn't be a safety net. I feel like that's what I want to point out. This should be a cost to play this card. So, if you play this card, you're, you're not at an advantage. Because you can just play this card and then you, you run right into the description next turn. And that's exactly what happens. Anyway, moving on. This card is broken. Don't get me wrong, it's not that overpowered where, you know, if your opponent has eight cards in the hand, they can replenish the field and get busy. But, again, you're taking your opponent's monsters, so your opponent's playing Grey Fox, you took it. Frozendar, you took it. You see what I'm saying? This is powerful, generically. Moving on. I run one copy of Guardian because I run three copies of New Era. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, Guardian is more balanced, but due to the fact it's 11 cost, 8-8 eight, eight guard that's immune to lethal. I love the fact that it's immune to lethal because Sanctuary's pet, Territorial Viper, can't touch this motherfucker, and that's appropriate. Lethal should not be able to touch this card at 11 cost, and I like the fact that it's 8-8, eight, eight, so it is manageable. It's just powerful due to the fact that you have two in each lane. Great presence, and again, I'd run three if New Era didn't exist. <laughs> fucking new errors, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. You know, when we gonna do a part one. We just gonna talk about the deck, and I'll show y'all a couple of matches, but we do a part two later, because this fucking card is OP. I'm glad I'm drinking the Crown Royal right now, because I can talk this shit. I've been playing this game for a little bit. Hey, hey, I'm gonna just show y'all duels I've won off to this shit. Y'all seen duels I've won off to this shit. This card has no business being in those Scrolls Legends. They should have patched this motherfucker before they left this shit alone. <laughs> I swear to God, yo. Don't get me wrong. I love to shit on Invade playing this card. I shit you not. Like, let's not even, I'm, no jokes. Like, turn 11 and Invade got a stack feel. I love to play this card. Fucking Invade. So, I'll leave it at that. But for like token based decks, for example, that kind of earned that, that's been playing strategically and building up their monsters. And even though one gets destroyed, they put two more or whatever and boost them up some more. This card just cheats that. Like, it cheats the work that those aggressive decks put in. And, yeah, I feel like, not that it shouldn't exist, but there should be a significant cost to play this card, especially at turn fucking 11. Yeah, pardon me, y'all. That is my rant on New Era. I love the card, but I just wish it was kind of edited, for lack of a turn, an errata, for lack of a, a better shit. I have plenty of turns. This card should be changed. Conscription is not OP, unfortunately. That's just something you got to deal with because New Era exists. Conscription been in the game for a little bit and you already know what it does. You have a lot of cards that cost two, at least for this build. And again, let me know what cards you'd recommend putting in the build. If you'd even run Conscription, I run three because at I am running one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, we're going like at turn 12, 12, 12. At turn 12, 12 turns have passed, or even 11, 11 turns, whatever. You're going to have played through one or two cards. So, for example, you'll have an opportunist maybe that you've played, and you'll have the one that draws a card. You'll have a copy of this to weaken whatever monster in the field. You, you'll have utility in terms of just being able to put a guard back in the field, weaken monster that they have in the field. Again, it just gives you the presence. Tillis Constriction is pretty much a swarm effect. And it just gives me defense. Um, plenty of draw power as well because I am going to be picking up a Thieves Guild Recruit. 
and I'm gonna have a marsh blade as well then depending on how that's set up I can maybe even sacrifice the same turn anyway ladies and gentlemen this is literally the longest deck discussion I've ever done for a build. Yeah, when I do Telvani, trust me, it's going to be much longer. Anyway, shout out to the Empire. Let's get to the gameplay. All right, let's get the work. Who we got up? The Creator versus the Red Mountain. I have no idea why I just did that. That's crazy. I mean, I'm feeling really good right now. Oh, shit. Okay. Get it popping. This hand ain't gonna pop off though. Let's see, we got oh, against Telvani though. We could, yeah. I mean, I could make this work. Telvani not really strong, strong, strong. I mean, I'm strong. Let me chill. Welcome, friend. Keep it very professional. Welcome, friend. This is interesting. All right, y'all. So, you're gonna take it slow and steady. Looks like we got an aggressive Telvani, so we, we got our money's worth. We're going to back up the shit that the boo was talking about. Let's get it. Yeah, aggressive Telvani don't fuck around. They, they going in. Let me, let me relax. Take it nice and slow. Unfortunately, this is going to be a long duel. I'm just, I'm in that kind of zone right now. Control. I strike like the Mora Tong. Swiftly and silently. Phenomenal blade, though, because I ain't got shit to answer that. To oblivion with you. Soldiers, form up. I counter, though. Boost every motherfucking monster in my build. That's a good counter. I wish it was like five turns later. I could have an easy answer for that. I mean, six turns later. See, the, the math is, is 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 off by one, but we good. We going to get a Thorn Hiss Mage on the field and boost that up to, to make everything make sense. All right, I'm done. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get a little bit more serious here, though. I mean, this is weak. This is still chilling, but I'm not going to use unnecessary resources to break that. So, yeah, that's cool. Dumak take you to oblivion with you. All right, so the game is switched up just a little bit. We definitely want to make it to 11 and just snatch up everything he has on the field. Hopefully, we'll draw some support removal for whatever altars he has or um, the Ring of Navarra, the Amulet of Navarra. I forgot the card off the moment. I'm blaming the Henny. Um, I feel like I'm about to get Darren with him, too, at 7 Magicka. I'll put it right on the... Mm. To throw, I mean, he has four cars. And... I smell blood on the wind. I'm thinking about the fact that common sense. He has four or five cards. He's gonna do something now to address what I have on the field. How could he not? He See what I'm saying? That's weak. I ain't, I ain't pressed on that. I could attack and Dawn's Wrath just in case it was something crazy, but I doubt it's gonna be anything wild. And you already see, I got Galen already in the hand. So I'm gonna use his effect already on Rosam Dog. That's that's the idea. This is unique. I only got one. Now I can make three more in the deck. Easy. But let me relax first, see what, what we're gonna do with this. Cause I don't like this on the field. As his magic goes up, this effect can I fuck this card. Alright. Solid. Alright, so <clears throat> We got we, we we need to make some decisions right now. It's easy to just put Galen and and pump rock, you know, make the cosm rosin all. That's the that's the predictable play. I'm trying to think about what we got long term right now. Cause I don't know what he's really working with. He used his shadow fin already. So I don't wanna I don't wanna put also despair on the field. That that would be foolish just in case he has dark rebirth or something crazy like that. Prefer to kill his card ASAP. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's slow it down. I will keep so people alive. Let's make some copies of Rosendor. Let's damn sure make use of Emperor's Blade. We drew that. Put it. Wow. Probably should have done this rank live, but fuck it. That'd just be wasting the viewers' time watching my opponent wait to reconnect. So, yeah, we're going to call this episode the Empire of uh, fucking Crown. 
Crown Royal Empire. We gonna call it like that. Because it looked like we about to have some shenanigans tonight. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun stream. Let me get this weak ass card off the field. Because this shit ain't doing nothing right now. Damn, I thought you was gonna really do something. This Telvani, my man. Telvani fucking puts in work. What's the word? Desperate conjuring this into something crazy. Maybe then Dark Rebirth it after that. And then Cruel Fire Bloom for the fuck of it. I don't know. I'm, I know I'm just talking crazy shit, but I'm just saying, like, the game ain't over until your life points hit fucking zero. You at 27. Why are you waiting to reconnect? Fuck out of there. Anyway. Crown Royal Empire. We drinking to that, motherfuckers. We making motherfuckers concede. <laughs> ah, I feel really good. I do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Elder Scrolls Legends. This is where you need to be. This shit is popping over here. My opponent is done. And we ain't even get started. We just on turn nine. Shit. Anyway, moving up. Huh. I mean, the fun is pretty much gone. We can do pretty much whatever we want to do now. What a... Hmm. Damn. At least try. I mean, try. Literally, that's not try asking something. a lot. You won't leave me Give me my effect. Alright, we out of here though. Now is the time to come back and play. You got a prophecy. Maybe it's a javelin. Maybe it's somehow Red Ear. And Red Ear is able to be a prophecy in your build. Even though that's not possible and you don't even play Red. I'm just saying, I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to give you positive energy. Oh, it's a, it's a shrieking harpy. All right, we keep that. Fuck out of here. This one war repelled the outlanders. Shout out to the Empire. May all our components, <laughs> our components, may all our opponents have this energy. Give me my effect. No further. That was a mistake. This one warned you. Good game, boy. Yeah! Do not take you. The night mother will guide us. I just wanted to give everyone a quick reminder that you can use his own effect to kill himself and get game if your opponent's at two life points. Quick heads up. We doing our play test behind the scenes. I want to definitely shout out my man. Uh, let me not say my man. I don't know him personally. personally. All right, y'all. That was a good first match. Real quick. You know, just a little brief showcase of my Empire build. Grown, grown folk deck. Shout out to the Empire. Hey, let's get to a match though before we be out. All right, y'all, so we're going to do the unending, and we're going to hope to kind of preview this with a good 1v1. Just to kind of showcase the deck. Again, this is more control-based. I guess I can stay stall. You know, I don't like the word stall because nothing stalls. You are attacking and eventually going to KO your opponent. So I feel like that's a detriment to the build. It does control well. And aggressive decks are supposed to have a problem with this. So, yeah, we're going to give aggressive decks a problem today. Looks like we got goblins on the mid. Oh, scout. I don't know. Goblins. Fucking. I hope it's not part of the next scout. Ugh. Ladies and gentlemen, drop a like if you've been enjoying it. Subscribe. You know I am covering everything for ranked gameplay. I know a lot of people have been fucking with the builds. A lot of people have been. People have been saying that they've been helped by this. So, yeah, subscribe as I have more builds coming. People have been sending me some deck submissions, so I got some codes to show off, some new decks, obviously. So, yeah, we're going to get to it. That was cool, silly shit, y'all. Hey, we going to work now. Listen, we playing against... I, I, I'm betting my ass is part of the next scout. Good Jesus Christ. I can't wait to join New Era. Let me shut up. Welcome, friend. I actually should have put in plural, but let me just chill. Let me just chill. Whoopsie. Whoop, whoop. My bad, y'all. Anyway, um, so we are at turn three. 
We're already playing this, but I'm just trying to think about who we run. Uh, it's obvious we should. I don't know what he's playing. That's why I hate doing that, but smart money. I will keep Sota Sil's people alive. When in doubt, put three copies of a unique card in the deck. When you draw later, you'll be happy. Alright, so my opponent's playing defensively. That's giving me scout vibes like he is playing Parthenax. I can either get aggressive in terms of putting Distiller in the shadow lane and seeing how he wants to react to me. Or I can put Skirmisher and protect my Galen. Yeah. The hit heals and rejuvenates. I want to get aggressive against this because if this is Scout, I want him to kind of put cards on the field now. I'll scout ahead. You're going to put something else on the field. Another Sanctuary set? I figured. All right, so I, I didn't want to protect Galen, but I damn sure will protect my only copper distiller. So let's do that. <laughs> I smell the stench of the living. Barrel Stalker was great because now we got Drain going into next turn. We straight. Fall to me. Oh, good play. All right, so my su my suspicions are confirmed. This is definitely a shout deck. We want to get it. We want to get our magic up fast. Faster than him. Faster than him. Fuck. You know what's crazy? What would be the misplay? Well, it, I wouldn't even say it'd be a misplay. It's just that we don't have anything that's kind of stopped us. We're putting this on the field for no reason. Like, I want to I want to put those in the field on the field. That sounds wild, but he has four cards in the field, and I know he's waiting for his call dragon, so fuck it. I got money in the bank that says he's not going to touch my face. You know he's sound like a motherfucker, so I'm going to do the same thing. Listen, we're going to get to this motherfucker shortly. We got Grey Fox in the hand. We got copies. By the power I'm chilling. Of the hiss. Chilling. See? That's why I'm not worried. Get, bet you he won't do it again, but I ain't going to talk shit. I'm not going to give him the opportunity to do that again. Fuck out of here. Let me um, let's see what we got here. Whoa. What was that? Let's see. What... Yeah, let's do that first. Yeah. You see my you see my mind changes a little bit. I think I'm gonna do that now. Again, all to the spares on a serious note, all to the spares gonna give us utility. That's cool. That's a better play. He's getting cards out of his hand, which is cool. Yeah, I can I can match him. He saw me, but I can. He's gonna have to put two cards on the field minimum. Yeah, at least two cards. He's gonna have to put on the field. That's one. If you break a rune, I'll be impressed. Cause I got more cards than you. Or oh, after you break a rune. All right. Kiss me. Yeah, you stall him. And you don't attack. See what's on team? That's how I know these decks is weak. They don't even want to attack. But I'm not going to talk shit. Pardon me. He's not even attacking. And if he puts if he puts Parthenax on the field, that shit is getting si that. You matter of fact, now I'm going to turn up. I'm going to turn up. He hasn't played anything good. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I know I'm 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 doing a bad job of pre previewing this deck. No, I'm not. I'm gonna fuck him up. Yeah. I do not see. And I match him. Make him play a card to address me. I'm even though that's that's a bad play. Like I had to force to remove a card, but he's gonna do oh. something. He's going to bat. There's no way. Yeah, I'm about to say. He wasted that, to be honest with you, y'all. That was a bad play. Let me chill, though. He thinks he got the shit popped off. Let me chill out. He's stalling, though. But he's got shit in the graveyard. Let me...
He's played nothing. Yeah, I ain't wasting my shit on that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not really. I got copies in the deck. I'm bugging y'all. Let me chill. Fortune fails. Just forget about C. Everyone does. I could just, you know what? Yeah, I'll troll you for that. Just because you want to talk shit. Let me take your shit. I didn't use Alter's effect just so I can make him use a card to get rid of it. I bet you he don't want me doing drain. That shit is getting banished, boy. Shit, but shit. We was we was ready for you. We saw you coming. You are not staying on the field long, boy. You are gone. Your effect was activated once, and that is it. Good job. Uh huh. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, get the fuck out of here. Just a quick heads up, if you playing against Scout, banish your Parthenex. Do not let that motherfucker hit the graveyard because they, they like to play reanimate. He probably drew a soul um soul tier to bring him back. You want this banished and removed from the game. Get this shit the fuck out of here. Moving on. Alright, so I'm still gonna wait for whatever support he has, because he probably has support. Let kind guide me. No, I'm not. You must be cleansed. Let me see what you have in that hand. Let's you okay, so you have that effect in the hand. Cool. And I'm not sure if you you might have boosted it. Wait, did you? Did you boost it or did you already play one? Oh no, you did. So you boosted something else in the hand. There's another boosted shout. He might have a coral dragon or some other dumb shit. Either way. Uh-huh. We got more. We got more. Good job. You know what's crazy? Another I want to give everybody kind of a heads up when you're playing against Scout Parthenex. They play Soul Tier Reanimate. So these Giant Bat is an example of a card that when you play Soul Tier and it's boosted by 5-5, five, five, you know, with the third level shout, it becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. If you have the opportunity, don't let this hit the graveyard. Banish that bitch. Especially if you banish their Parthenax already too. Don't ever let that shit hit the field. Anyway, let's attack you for the lulls. Now we good. He needs to get rid of these supports. Yeah, I was about to say, this shit can't stay on the field no more. Yeah, like, yeah. See, we good now. Shit. Now nah, he don't want to stall with me. I just need to get Rosam Dar back. Oh, I'm saying Rosam Dar can get the hand. Perfect. Oh, forgot I had you. And you don't even play. What you got for me now, King? What you got for me now? Call Dragon need to hit this field, boy. Oh. Face. Thank you. Soldiers, form up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm not sure if it bears without mention, but don't ever return this card to the hand. You don't ever want this effect to be reused. I have no idea why an opponent would. Let me show. <laughs> just minding my business here, y'all. I ain't doing nothing. Just minding my business. Just bringing back Gale in the shelter with a boost of Necromancer and Blit. As discussed in the preview discussion earlier, please like and subscribe because I'm about to wreck my opponent. He's going to concede soon because this shit is over. Anyway, I'm going to make three copies of Guardian and uh, we already have one in the hand. He, I think he... Oh, he put it back in my hand because he played fucking um, Unrelenting Force. I don't know what other shouts he has in the hand. 
I'm not gonna give him more cards. He gonna put the cards on the field. Yeah, I'm not. No, I'm. I know I'm playing like kind of suspect right now, but I'm not gonna draw. Matter of fact, I'll fuck with y'all. Just wanna see if he was gonna be stupid enough to just put that dumb shit on the field by itself. We gonna swing and attack this motherfucker now. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. We killed the Parthenax, y'all. So I, I wasn't aware a long time ago. We good. Checkmate. What in the fuck was he thinking? Just putting a thieves girl recruit in the field and then passing. Wow. You gonna give him back to me? Oh, you gonna get these back? You you gonna give me back another guardian? With 14 Magicka. <laughs> I will keep Sota Sil's people alive. Part of me. I'm sorry. I don't think I've had an opponent ever do that to me. That's why I'm laughing. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, I'm looking at this field and I'm like, yo, is. Forgive me. I lurk in the shadows. Wait, I smell the stench of the living. Part of my cocky demeanor earlier, y'all. That that was just that was wrong. I ruined this part in that trailer too. You gonna play Soul Tear, I bet. I bet you gonna play Soul Tear. Oh. I thought you go play Soul Tear. That's that's I don't think he's gonna do that. Like to boost it? That'd make sense. But did he even play Call Dragon? Oh, he did bad. He didn't even play Call Dragon. Oh, he desperate. Oh, he desperate. You know, if he was playing casual, I'd, I'd, I'd let the shit rock, but... Yeah, that's far from it. We out there, but... Shit, I just auto pass turn. Like, I don't even need to worry about that shit. We good out of here. That's cocky. Play conscription didn't even use the attack. We out of here, boy. I wonder what happens if I. Oh my god. It ain't Parthenax you're getting. Good job. And that's why it was good to remove him. You don't want him to be using the shit. But we out of here on that. It has been my honor. GG, y'all. So, hey, this is the preview. I have no idea why I did that. I call it a preview because I want to go into the weaknesses as well. Do not get shit twisted at all. There are losses that you take on this build as well when you play against an aggressive build that don't got no that don't give a fuck about this guard shit that it has set up. We was able to counter our opponent and just work around them. Our opponent was stalling as well, but we were able to stall better. An aggressive build does not give a fuck about stalling. They are coming for your face and they're gonna punch hard. So yeah. There'll be a part two to kind of discuss the weaknesses. You'll see them as well because they're, they're aggressive places out there. Um, decks that would easily just run through and just dodge this. Kaji can dodge around this like a motherfucker. You know, having a little fun with it. Wanted to get back to basics and just talk about it. You know, just my opinion and shit on how to build is. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. We are coming back on the next video. Please like and subscribe. Please share. Let me know what your thoughts are on the build. Community, legends, I am always curious to know what you think. Let me know below in the comments. What do you feel about the build? Do you feel like Stall is trash? Do you feel like this is can be done better? Do you feel like this is picture perfect? We going to keep this to a part one, y'all, because I wanted to kind of... What I want to do... I'm going to take my time, first off. And then what I want to do is just showcase very unique matches. What I want to do before the game is officially dead, showcase some unique. 
showcase some legendary 1v1s. You know, every match is unique due to the fact that every match is different. But I want to really showcase the matches that really go to metal. My opponents that's really not fucking around and it's not, that's not giving me no inch. And me where I'm just at my peak and not really making no kind of misplays and just doing my thing. Even if I'm making misplay, if I'm able to bounce back and just fuck them up. You know, all that type of shit. Even if, you know, top rank number one, number two, don't matter. We're going to give them the fucking work. Yeah, I said it. Don't matter the rank. Rank number one, neck rank number 100. We're going to give them the work when we play this build. And that's what we're hoping to showcase on that part too. So, yo, like and subscribe, y'all. This is my longest death discussion. I hope this has been helping y'all because I've played this on the channel before in terms of my live rank videos. You'll see those obviously throughout the feed. Please send me your deck code submissions. Please let me know what decks that you'd like to see me play. This is rank, baby, so you know what we're doing over here. I've done, obviously, Consume, Skeleton, Deadland, Kaji. Definitely shout out Kaji. That motherfucker still work. I'm still working. There's still a lot of ideas. There's still so much gameplay to... Even though the meta is still stagnant, for lack of a better term, there's been no updates for years. There's still so much to talk about, especially when you talk about rank gameplay. Anyway, that's just my opinion. And it's my channel. <laughs> I will see everybody on the next one, y'all. Cheers. This is Sly Boogie. Elder Scrolls Legends rank gameplay. Elder Scrolls is still the shit, y'all. 100. I don't think no one says 100 no more. But I, I'm going to say it, though. Because it, it, it's real. Fucking Elder Scrolls still the shit, y'all. I don't give a fuck.